Miss Booker. Yeah. I, I was yeah. just asking. And not to get in the way of that, but then there's two people that might not be here. might not be. And so right. and, and, Mrs. Uh, and, and that's had, why I just I just asked. Right. And Mrs. Eager's never had the honor of being the chair either. So uh whereas I Mrs. Booker has to Miss Booker. <laughs> Uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm, 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 I guess I came out the wrong way with the way I said it. No, I hear you. Uh, but yeah, he called me up a couple nights beforehand, and, and Miss Booker had said, uh, "You know, I want to continue running, and just in case this is the last rodeo." And so, it, did you? Have, I'm sorry. No, right. no, I was just feel, again. That's why I wanted to open up the conversation instead of any motions to. Yeah. So this yeah, that's why I didn't make a motion. That's why yeah. my first thing was a question to Miss Booker I, if she would be interested. I, I wholeheartedly agree and and thought the same thing. And I think it's very gracious of you to to well, I mean, make that nomination. Uh, like I said, I, I served at the will of the board with yeah, with what I did. And if you asked me to do it again, I'd do it again. But like I said. Uh, I've made no bones about it how much I thought about Mr. Weaver. Yeah. And he made that conversation. He literally called me up and said, Hey, when did he, think? when did he call you? Uh, oh, but you're Four saying years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, but not this time. Ago. I got you. <laughs> Miss Booker's smiling. <laughs> but he said, He goes, Mike, I know I've dominated you the last two years, but this is Moselle's last one. I think I'm going to nominate Moselle. I said, Mr. Weaver, if you do, I'll be, I'll second it right behind you. And so, uh, Mr. Weaver, I hope you're listening. <laughs> he's, I can tell you he's not listening online. <laughs> <laughs> but then, no, but Miss Miss Eager, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to disrespect you when I said that. Ms. No, I just thought funny. about that when you said that, Chris. Yeah, yeah. And please don't take it that way, ma'am. I don't. I didn't think you did because I'd asked you before. Yeah. Well, it sounds like she agrees. Both of you said it. And so I'll make a motion that we make Moselle the chair of the board of supervisors for the coming year. I'd I'll like to second. second. Well, I'm, go ahead, Ms. Eager. You want to go do ahead. It? I'll do it. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we got a motion by Mr. Fairchild for uh, Mrs. Booker as the uh, board chair, seconded by Mrs. Eager. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, and motion passes four to zero. Uh, four zero. Mike, I, I think you can stay there. I don't think it, do, I don't think I don't think I, the chair is specifically did, placed. Miss Booker, I'm sorry. Did did you did you vote or did you did oh, you say you abstained? Or did you abstain? She abstained. So four, zero, four zero one. Four zero one. Yeah. Good call. Okay. Thank you. Well. All right. So I guess we need to do a switcheroo then because the technically the board chair sits here next to Mr. Payne. Uh, but, or, but is that right? Or we uh, or the I mean, board can leave it where they want it. I think we just did the shuffle when we were trying to we just leave a right distribute it is, the conversations. That's fine. I, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, so y'all gonna leave me over here and make me have smack Mr. Payne. <laughs> okay. There you Thanks. go. There you go. There you, go. Really? So there you go in the gavel. All right. Now um, what are you gonna do, Moselle? Huh? Now what are you gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna Let's say see. that That's um I'm I'm very honored. Um I don't think there are any other words to say other than I'm very honored and I thank you and I'll be here for the year to do my very best. Okay. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, now we will open the nomination for vice chair of the Pluvanna County Board of Supervisors for the calendar year of 2023. In the same vein as uh, Mr. Sheridan's kind and generous motion, I would like to nominate Mrs. Eager. That's I'll where I was going to go. Yeah. I'll second that one. All right, it has been motioned that Mrs. Patricia Eager will be the vice chair, seconded by who? Seconded you, Chris, both of y'all. And it's Mike, it don't Mike Sheridan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The chair votes aye. We didn't even give her a choice in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the la we all know that the ladies are going, are going to be in charge no matter whether the title is there or not. Two women, look out, y'all. We're going to have to meet next week to get our strategy. Okay. And Madam I'm Chair, did, 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 Mrs. Yeah. did Mrs. Eager, did she, did she abstain as well? Did you? Uh, uh, sure. Oh. <laughs> Four zero. That's good. 
All right, next thing we have is adoption of the resolution entitled Organizational Meeting of the Blue Valley County Board of Supervisors 2023. So, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. So, again, this is kind of uh, is the resolution stating uh, for 2023 where our meeting places, our meeting times. Um, so, again, our, our meeting place we have we have listed here is the Carriesburg Performing Arts Center. Meeting times, uh, day meetings begin at five and end at nine unless extended. Night meetings begin at seven and end at eleven unless extended. And when scheduled work sessions begin at five p.m. prior to the regular meeting. And the resolution was in the board package, kind of stating uh, stating the same. So, be happy to answer any questions the board has about the resolution. I'll just make one statement. Just this, sitting back and looking at this over the last few years, I, you know, and I know we have it on there for four hours. When we go past that four hours, I just don't know how productive we are. When we get here, five, six hours, five and a half hours, I think I know I, I get. I got ADHD anyway. They just didn't have that label when I was a kid. But uh, it's just, I, I just think if we stick to those four hours and best we can, which we do try to do sometimes, but mm -hmm. when we get long, I think we start losing focus. But what would you do if you're not finished with the agenda? It would move to the next two weeks, two weeks later. Well, don't you think that might sort of hold Snowball. things up? Okay, I, yeah. I, I'm just, I, I just, I think that we as a group just, I thought, and this is just me sitting back, I think we get long. I know I've never tried to cut anybody off or tried not to, okay, and that probably got longer. But well, well, the problem is that you got, there are cases where you really need to get it done. Well, that's why I said try, I didn't say mandatory. Well, I think that's what the, in effect, that's what the, no, what the oh, bylaws yeah. really say. You got to have an affirmative vote to extend it. Right. And just everybody has been agreeable and nobody has, has has tried to interfere with. I, I do remember some cases in past years, not, not recently, but in past years, there were cases where more and more supervisors would say, I'm going home. And and uh, <laughs> and the meeting was not extended. But um, that's a matter of just personal discipline. And so I think that's gonna, probably about yeah. as good a system as you're going to get. I, right. I just, like I said, yeah. I'm not trying to say anything against it. I just want to make. I I hear you. And I comment. think I think as a chairperson, I should try to make it through in four hours. If, if you and want, Mrs. Eager, as my assistant, can kind of keep me focused to say the discussion. We need to end the discussion. Come up with some kind of ending resolution and move on so we can try that well there are ways that you can you can shorten the meeting yeah one of them is to use the more conventional form of for actions and that is there is no discussion on a motion after a second until after a second okay and so if you're talking about you know rezoning black acre uh discussion of whether it's appropriate to rezone black acre is out of order mm -hmm. until a motion is made in second Okay. Now that's a very strict rule in my few decades of, of sitting here. You have I have repeatedly suggested that you should yeah. consider that and the board has never done it. Okay. But I'm I'm just bringing it up as, as well. well I've I'm written trying. it down and I need to hold to that. Um so discussion starts after the second. I was reading So I think we'd have to vote on that, wouldn't we? Yes. Okay. If we, well, but that would become our policy. You don't technically need to vote on it no, because it's, it's already there. That's, oh, the, I see. that's the rule as, but, as, as it stands. But you need to, again, that's a matter enforce. of this. Yeah. Have to enforce it. Like I said, I tried my best not to. Yeah, yeah. It, it would be more along the lines of for each agenda item, you know, if 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 if, if the chairperson feels that it's running along to, to kind of move it, move, move, move it along more and then kind of cut it. Yeah. Out. And then if it wasn't a uh, voted positively, then it would go back to a different motion. Correct. So if if after the second, and then we discussed it, and then when the vote came up, we didn't pass it. it didn't pass. We would go back to another motion. <laughs> yes, if it didn't second, it would be a different motion. Yes. Well, I think the proper proper way to do that would be uh, to go through it 
motion passes or fails, and if there's a substitute motion, that can be made at any time. Okay. So if you know Mr. Fairchild makes a motion and, and it's seconded, and a majority of the board doesn't agree with it, doesn't want to pass it, Mr. O'Brien could come up and and say, I, I want to I want to make a substitute motion. And of course, then that has to be voted on. If it is, then the substitute motion takes its place and you have to vote on the substitute motion. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. that's that's another way to do it. Okay. It's, okay. it's it's more formal and more impersonal. But and I you know I've always kind of liked the way the board does mm -hmm. business because you know you feel like you're talking to people. But the uh but it it does tend to let things get a little now better. you are also considered the parliamentarian. Yes. So you could um remind me or whoever um, that we need to follow that that rule. If the board wants me to do it I'll be glad to do it. Yeah so we can kind of stay I don't mind stay on track. Any questions? So, well I I, I I just say as as much as I completely understand your point um at the same time uh you know we all have points that we want to get out that we feel haven't been heard or really even there's been discussion maybe the discussion hasn't gotten to the point of where we're trying to go with it. And, um, you know, the if it's productive to get something out and dealt with, then I don't want us personally sitting here being time conscious. Personally, and there's times where I've had to be on a early morning plane out of Richmond, but if it's getting it done, I, I'm, I'm going to ride it out. And, um, so completely hearing what you're saying, Mike, at the same time, we meet twice a month and some items are beefy and need conversation. And um, so I also don't want us to be afraid of discussion. doing that, of discussion, and um, certainly don't want to be in a situation where um, one of us feels like, boy, this hasn't really been vetted and suddenly you're saying to the chair, I'm sorry, but I've got to say what I've got to say. And then suddenly you're in a board vote to to say we're going to leave yeah, it at that. I understand. I understand exactly where you're coming from. And but I <clears throat> and I do think as chair, I would try to move that along yeah. so that everyone does feel comfortable yeah. that you're being heard. But sometimes we 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 repeat what the other person said, but we just say it in a different right. way. So we need to be conscientious that we are adding something to the conversation and not just repeat. Repeat. Yeah, all good points. And and I'm not saying try to speed through. Yeah, no. okay. I'm saying, but I think when we get to a certain point in time, mm -hmm. I think we've become counterproductive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. If there's no more discussion about that, let's go to D. Adopt. No, we got to make a motion. Make oh, I'm sorry. All right, I got this. All right, I have go been ahead. Able to Thank do this you. For a while. Okay. I see it. Up here. I move to adopt the resolution entitled "Organizational Meeting of the Fluvanna County Board of Supervisors 2023," which designates the location, day, and time of meetings. Meeting place carries carries Brook Performing Arts Center. Meeting times: day meetings begin at 5 p.m. and end at 9 p.m. unless extended. Night meetings begin at 7 p.m. and end at 11 p.m. unless extended. When scheduled, work sessions begin at 5 p.m. prior to the regular evening regular evening meeting. I do have to add one thing. Do we have the two months where we're meeting at the library? Didn't we say we we're going to have two months where we leave here? Yes, but but this is this is more for like what is our what is our, our I didn't typical, know if we had to add no, something. This is more of our here. typical meeting place. All right, do we, have, do we have a second? Second. All right, it's been moved by um Mike Sharon and second by Patricia Eight. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the chair votes aye, so that motion is carried. Um, now we have a calendar. We had a calendar presented to us. Here it is. Did anyone see anything on there? Is that with the library thing come up on this? Mike? No, I mean, no? really, the library thing is just something that we do in October, okay. just because we're in this spot. And, and so we don't necessarily need to post that. I mean, again, from a posting standpoint, we do all the necessary notifications well in, well in advance for the public. But this here just lists all the dates throughout 2023 um, and, and the times for those. And then obviously, um, as usual, uh, we have one July meeting, and that's at uh, July 5th this okay. year. All right. 
Any questions or concern about it? If not, do we have a motion? I move to adopt the 2023 Board of Supervisors regular meeting calendar. Second, please. Second. I have been moved by Mr. Brian second then. Mrs. Peter, all in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Chair votes aye. That motion is passed. And the next thing we have is E, adoption of board bylaws and rules of practice and procedure. So, so uh, Madam Chair, again, the typical bylaws and rules of procedure, a couple things. One, um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Booker noted that there was um, a, a four uh, a four p.m. error in what was in the package. We have made a correction on that, and then just one point of 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 just clarification too. Um, if you go at the very end of the bylaws, um, maybe if I move this and I just pull it all the way down, let it probably be quicker. Um, so at the end when we adopted our bylaws last year we adopted them separately this time they're including regarding electronic meetings they're included within the bylaws themselves so again um there's no changes that have been in there with the exception of just adding that piece in there which which would have been in there last year but it was adopted separately um happy to answer any questions that the board has do you have any questions about the bylaws? Uh, I move to readopt the current Board of Supervisors bylaws and rules of practice and procedures. Second. All right, again, the motion by the speaker and second by the chair. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Now for the, for the uh, regular meeting. Thank you all for that part of the meeting. And we have the adoption of the agenda. I see one thing that I did not see. Do we have any kind of a resolution by chance about the historic courthouse? We do not because no. And, and honestly, Ms. Kilpatrick just literally called me as I was walking out the door today. So maybe we need to have a discussion about that with the board and 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 yeah okay. we need to, that will be under new business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, so under new business, we will put historic the courthouse. Historic yeah, his, yeah, historic courthouse resolution. I can um, yeah. have administrators report. Yeah, just uh, honestly, I just have a few quick things to report this evening. What's that? Motion oh, motion on the agenda. I, I don't. So, yep. Okay, so I need a second. second. All right. It has been a motion made by Mr. Brian Seth. I'm certain to accept the agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, yeah, so the, for the county minister's report, just a few items to add. We'd like to um, welcome a new employee, Jennifer Jenny Miner. <clears throat> she started December 8th for Parks and Rec. She's a facilities and programs assistant. Um, and then also uh, talking about a little bit of Parks and Rec. Um, so uh, the past this past December 29th, 2022, uh, in Parks and Rec, I was the Wheeland Sportsman Hunt at Pleasant Grove Park was held again. Uh, four hunters had 50 degree days in clear weather, um, and uh, which was between uh, last Thursday between 2 and 5.31 p.m. Uh, one deer was harvested during the event. Um, and then if you look at the, the map on the, um, sorry, on the left, um, the orange star marks were, were, were that deer was uh, harvested. Um, special thanks to Fred Payne, Sheriff Hess, and the Sheriff's Department, along with volunteers Dan Dan Palmatier and Emily Beasley Brown, who's a Fluana native, as well as Parks and Rec staff Eric Armentrot, Travis Lawson, and Aaron Spitzer, who all assisted in the event. And again, the, the uh, below just shows what deer, where deers were harvested in 2021 versus 2022. And I'll, I'll leave it up to Mr. Payne since he was actually a uh, since he's actually there. Madam Chairman, I have a couple of comments. The It's actually Ed Palmatier. Oh, okay. Not Dan. Um, and uh, what we what we harvested was a question of 
what your perspective is. Um, there was only one that was brought, was killed and and brought out, mm. but actually two were shot, and the other one almost certainly died. But it frankly went into a place where we couldn't go. We just couldn't get in there. It was too thick, and um, there was. Uh, it's a question of using too much gun for too little deer, but uh, for, I say that because the. If you remember, the, the basic reason for doing this was to cut down the herd <laughs> so the sheriff could stop having his, having his cars wrecked by deer all the time. So from that standpoint, we got two, only one of which was taken home. But um, th this, I will say, this has been absolutely the worst deer season that I've ever had. Um, people, including myself, have gone out repeatedly and not seen anything. And that's, you know, you see them on the road and all this kind of stuff in your backyard and everything, but not when you're hunting. And that's what happened here. And I just think it's a continuation of it. And the weather really didn't help. It was too warm. Um, all things considered, I think it was pretty successful. I think deer know when they're safe. <laughs> they're in Lake Monticello. <laughs> my property backs up to it so they don't quite know that line <laughs> well i'll have six of them that i'll pass on the way back to troy tonight as long as we pass them i, I want to be i want to be passing them yeah. And then again, just some upcoming board meetings. Um, so January 18th at 5 uh, at 5 p.m., we have another nonprofit work session. Uh, January 18th at 7 p.m., we'll have a regular meeting. Um, so, so far already, we have four public hearings um, for, for uh, I think they're all rezonings, I believe. Four, yeah, four rezonings on January 18th. Um, and then on February 1, we'll have a 5 p.m. regular meeting. Then February 1st at 7 p.m., I will present my county administrator's FY24 budget proposal and we'll go through revenues and expenditures. And Mr. Sheridan? Madam Chair, I will let you know on February 1st, I will not be here. And it's oh. breaking my heart that I'm yeah, here. You, to be to be to to you need to cancel whatever you're doing. I'll let you call Christine Tupper. <laughs> And and then one thing too, just uh, we're going to arrange with this. Usually every budget year we do usually like uh, uh, two by meetings for for board members to come in and kind of get a sneak preview of the budget, and ask questions and stuff like that. We usually do that the week prior. I think we have on the budget calendar January twenty third to twenty seventh. So we'll we'll be reaching out to the board members to see what days and times and everything works out for for uh, different members to to be able to kind of come in and get a sneak preview and ask questions. Uh, but that's all. That's all I have to report, Madam Chair. If not, then we will open our first public uh, comment. And we'd like you to come to the podium here and give your name and address. And you have five minutes to speak to the board. Anyone would like to speak? Okay, I don't see anyone coming. For anyone online? Eric? No, ma'am. Okay, then we will close the first public comment. We don't have any public hearing. So action matters, appointments, we have presentations. The first presentation is the Savannah Community Center Renovation Updates. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, so supervisors, um, you know, I know Mrs. Booker has brought this up a couple of times, and I know us maybe one or two other board members have been to the community center. But again, we wanted to give the board just an update of kind of what the, condition of the community center, some costs that have been submitted in the fiscal year 24 budget for the CIP. And then just one, if, if there's any, uh, you know, any questions at the end, or if there's any, anything that the board feels we should move forward with sooner than later. So anyway, we'll just kind of go through and show you. So one uh, the board requested staff to bring forward a list of renovations for the community center. 
and the list of requested renovation items are in the fiscal year 24 capital, capital improvement plan that already went through the planning commission. And so that'll be coming to the board as part of the budget. Like I said, I haven't, I haven't determined which items are in the budget at this point, but it's, but it's, it's a request. <clears throat> so one, one of the first items, uh, um, that Mr. Hickman put in uh, for the community center. So just just to kind of give you a heads up, so the total request for the for the community center was a total project cost of six hundred and fifty thousand. So we'll kind of go through all the different items of 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 that request. So the first part of that is pa uh, patch and paint interior walls, doors, hard ceilings, exterior doors and windows. Some of it's a little hard to see. I mean, you know, the from the pictures, the walls look good, but if you get in there and kind of really get a, a close look, one, it's definitely in need of some paint and some 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 renovations from a just a just a general paint and and kind of touch up standpoint. I'm not sure when the building or the interior was painted, but it's been quite some time. And if you get really close to looking at this front door and, and looking at some of the green trim around and things like that. It just it's it's it, it's in need of it's in need of some 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 attention. Yeah. And, and can I ask sure. when we get these estimates, where are they coming from? Mr. Hickman. I thought so. That's it. That's, yeah. Uh, Mr. Hickman brings them forth, you know, just from from experience talking yeah. to vendors. Um, you know, vendors that we dealt with, you know, from a carpet standpoint, what's a you know, what's the price per square foot, you know, price per I don't know what what the basis is for for painting if it's per square foot or whatever, but okay. those are kind of where some of the estimates come from. Thank you. Um, then another item was to install carpet in the auditorium and entrance area. So if you see the floors and some of the pictures, you can see a, there is some like a, a, a I'm not sure what type of coat this is over the existing floors, but a lot of areas in the floor you can see some of the lines are coming up and a lot of the a lot of that coating is starting to chip away and come up. Um, it's just it's a, it's in need of some attention. So, um, thirty thousand uh, is the plan for installing carpet. And when I say carpet, I'm not talking shag carpet. Something similar to what is in the, the library meeting room there. You know, something commercial grade, uh, durable, low, um, kind of low low height and and you know in squares carpet squares and stuff so things can be replaced by square if if anything needs to be you know repaired or anything like that and so that's kind of the look of you know what would be intended for potentially the auditorium and then maybe some of the hallway areas as well any questions on on that item <laughs> yeah yes, go you think some green shag carpet in there <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There you go. Is the carpet less than uh, new flooring, Mr. Hickman? Could you come up? You might want to just stay up here if questions come up on this one. I'm a little worried about the carpet getting really dirty. Yeah. So, Mr. Hickman, the question was: mm -hmm. Is is carpeting more? You would say more expensive than other flooring options. Was that was that the question, Mrs. Eager? Yes. Is it is it there's what's it compared to regular flooring vinyl? The uh, well, we picked we picked carpet for sound as well as comfort in in there, and we have used uh, this type of carpet in the library in the uh, safety building, and it's it's been a great product for us that we've used. You can put it down in uh, twelve inch or twenty four inch squares, so if something gets damaged, we can take it right back up and uh, fix the area in a very small area versus the whole area. So that we just, I just estimated with the carpet. So that's what I did. I, I was trying to think to the library, like it's the back door that I'm used to walking in. <clears throat> if if it's initially carpet or if there's some sort of vinyl or something, it is. And yeah, I was wondering the same thing here, or just imagining how dirty that entrance, if it was carpet, the first step in might be. And again, looking at some 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 flooring options for here, maybe right at the very beginning of the doorway, yeah. maybe right in that first area, maybe it's not carpet, maybe it's something else. Yeah, or, or you have a mat down or something yeah. like that, a big mat over the carpet or something like that. But the carpet, 
that low profile commercial grade carpets held up very well. And there's lots of kids activities going on at the library as well. So and, and I think that's one thing you're saying is with the 12 and 24 inches, let's say those first two or three get bad. Yeah, you can replace it. Up, yeah. Like, and, and and Miss Hoffman's online too. If you want to get any from the library, she, if, if she has commented and said that it's super easy to clean, used in many assisted living places, back hallway is high, and meeting room and main area and carpet. We have mats just in the door on the top. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, so that's that's kind of we'll look at what was and again too. You know, some of it is is. There's a you know just a utility standpoint. Then there's also the sound deadening piece in there. Any anytime you try to have any type of meeting or anything in there, it's near impossible. There's a couple of factors that lead to that, but it's near impossible to hear in there. So that's one item. Um, second is potentially, and, and and this one we would have to see really what the intended use is from that room, but potentially installing a sound system for the auditorium as well in there. So that's estimated at around twenty thousand. Um, and, the, and then again, this is just a look at the stage from, from the back of the room and then a look from on top of the stage, looking towards, um, the entrance into that, uh, in, in into the audit auditorium area. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. The stage itself, the wood floor is, yeah. So is it still wood floor in there or that coating is over it? I think it, it is I think wood. it's wood. Oh, is it the stage? Oh, the stage. Yeah, yeah the I'm stage. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the stage is wood. Um, secondly, replace end of life spanned HVAC heat pumps at, at 90k. And Mr. Hickman, I'll let you speak about this. I mean, just before you do, just a couple things. You can see a couple of pictures here showing the room. So again, here's so the kind of the mechanical room. And the returns are right in the room, and you can see the big duck work going on both sides of the room, and it's loud. And so, Mr. Hickman, you want to speak on the HVAC system? Yeah, the way the uh, system was designed, it's very noisy in, in there, and it's because the return and the uh, is so close right there. You and the equipment is right behind that wall. You can just hear it when it when it comes on and off. And there's nothing we can dampen that with the way it is built today. Um, the system is coming near the end of its life. If we're going to do any modification, we we would replace the units. In there. But what would that do to dampen the noise, replacing the units? We would move the, we'd either change the return or we'd move the equipment away from the return. How, how old is the equipment, do you know? Um, it's pretty old. I can't tell you the date right now. We had a uh, couple of years ago, Mr. Fairchild, before you got on here. They came through and went through all of the air conditioning units. It's like half of them were going to need to be throughout the county building. They yeah. need to be replaced within the next three to five years. Yeah, we had a number, and, and, and I don't recall, I actually, it was when, when, when the county hired the HVAC um, specialist position, the number of units that we had in county buildings, and it was pretty astronomical and kind of the, the age of them, and there a lot of them are pretty at end of life. And especially when we did the energy audit, some of those, you know, they kind of went through and looked at some of them. And so, yeah, some of our units are, are, are getting close. And I, I don't know the specifics on, on this particular unit. Whatever meeting it was, they had a list. And I mean, it listed installed this year, installed this yeah. year. You know, how many years? So we know when these were installed. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think we have a document that says the, the year that the year of the units. Yeah, can the it, age of the units. Can we find that out? I can get that later. Yeah. Yeah. If you, I don't know if you can look back in a meeting. Oh, we can do it. Yeah, yeah. for another time if, if we want to. Yes. Yeah. There's a couple more. Yeah, just a couple. Just go through. So one, renovate bathrooms with new fixtures, stalls, and vanities. I only went to the men's room, took pictures there. So can't tell you what the ladies' room looks like. Um, but again, some of it, you know, you've got hodgepodge of, of you know, old lavatory sinks more home sinks and you know some of it's not in horrible shape it's just again some of it needs to be it i don't think it's had a, a major renovation of, of of any sort um in, in quite some time Actually, I can't oh you can i knew i knew she could find it she'd look it up things like that would you would you say uh so there's lots of dates but the earliest date is 2001 okay that, that the units were installed? Yeah, there's nine heat pumps. Um, 
I've got two in 2001, two in 2002, two in 2004, and then 2011, 16, and 7. And so we know that, I'm assuming we know they weren't 11 or 16. Right. Yeah, because I, I honestly, when I did the walk of some of the other other pictures, I think some of the other units on the outside of the building, when I saw them, they looked a little newer. As yeah, I was we were going close around. to the outside units. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> Thank you. That's 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 been that's been done. The uh, drop ceiling's been put in there to fix to fix that issue. Yeah. Um. Again, uh, install concrete sidewalk to connect all the way around the building. You can just see, so there was there was work. I don't know whatever type of plumbing work that was done on the building some time some time ago. And you can see, like for instance, in the picture to the right, things were cut out, sidewalks were cut out, and never replaced. You can look back here, and, and it's kind of hard to see. There's sections of sidewalk that were cut out for any type of plumbing, and there's been no type of replacement. And you can just see some of the status current um shape of some of the existing sidewalks there so there's in needs of some concrete work around the building as well okay when you look at the um picture on the next bottom back yep and and over to the right you can see the raised gardens yep that i've seen is the raised vegetables and they have to come around the building or those who can come down to get into that area. Yeah. Uh, and a big, a big shout out to, to, to Kim Mayo and, and, and her folks and, and public works, you know, that was kind of creating that, that whole fenced in garden area was, was a joint effort. And the, this picture doesn't do it justice, but they've done a lot of good work in there. But again, some of the area around it for, for those that are utilizing it, it's not the, probably not the safest. Um, and so the, again, that was uh, concrete work was 80,000 and then um, install new roof, which is the biggest ticket, the largest ticket item of the 650 for 250. And then there's also have a contractor engineer investigate and provide solution. There's a basement underneath the stage room that that has some, some issues and leaks and stuff like that. Um, so Calvin, any information you want to provide on the roof or the age of the roof? No, no, I can't give you the age of it, but uh, these were, I did not get a contractor out there to estimate it. This was just our estimation that we did for it. And um, it's going to be in that ballpark. Is it rubber membrane or? Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Yes, that is correct. No, and and again, this this is just kind of the kind of the the, the recap of everything. And again, the total is six fifty. So some of these things, you know, the county could, you know, maybe some of the smaller items. If the board wanted us to move forward, we could move forward in some other other means, whether it's coming out of fund balance, coming out of CRM, or we can just wait to do everything in in as part of the FY twenty four CIP process. So, but but again, this this request is in is in for fiscal year twenty four for the CIP. But I know there's been some some questions about you know getting getting an idea of what's going on in that building. So this 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 is kind of what what's needed. And there's probably some little other smaller odds and ends that are not CIP worthy to add in here. So I'd ask, and we've had the conversation throughout the year. Thirty thousand foot. What's our goal? So I, I I look at some of this and go, boy, you got to take care of this because somebody could fall and get hurt and so on. Also look at the bathroom and say, all right, it's not cosmetically pleasing, but while very functional, meaning it's a it is a mismatch of what seems to be a residential vanity and all. So it even brings up in in my own mind what is our goal and what we're doing here, and to me that helps to determine where and what we spend money on. Well, I think for one thing's for certain, the, the building's not necessarily going, well, I don't think I've ever heard from the board that the board wants to um, have that building not be a part of, of our facilities in the future. Right. Um, again, we got a new commercial kitchen that's in there, you know, I think cooperative extension. Mm -hmm. Um, when they moved there, we, I think they were a little hesitant about the move there just because they're leaving Palmyra and from more of the population center. But the nice thing about them being there is they've really been able to do a lot more with their 
with their ag programs there, the big garden and stuff like that. And there's some space for them to do that. So I don't see the building necessarily not being part of our, our of our of our facility. So if it's going to stay in, in in that fashion, plus Parks and Rec has programs there. That's one of the senior centers. So if it's going to stay there, we need to do things to, to get it up to shape. If we're going to have meetings, you know, if we want to have any type of meetings there that are that are productive and and easier to hear, um, you know, I just think some of this stuff is 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 going to be needed. And I agree with that, all of it. I, I'm glad we're there. And there's lot, lots that needs to be done. Again, I'll, I'll make the the sink the poster child of that's that doesn't fit into a real need. Um, so is it, but there's also a need for aesthetics and to make it something that any building that people want to go into and enjoy as a part of the county. So again, I'm just trying to figure out um, where we are regarding what we want to affect and what we don't. What we want to use it for. Yeah, I think I think the, the way it looks says a lot about Ravana County. It says Ravana County Community um, a Community Center, and um, as you look at other counties, that's that's the hub of that county. It it represents what the county stands for, and I think if we can. Um, do the things, those things need to be done and make it more inviting. I think it will be used more. Um, a lot of things go on in that building. Maybe we need to have the, the extension agency come in and tell us all the things that they do. Like if they're going to do um, a lesson on some agricultural thing, they may in that auditorium to meet. Um, we need to um, encourage people to use it more. Um, it, it could make money for the county. Um, but if it's going to be called Sylvania County Community Center, let's make it look like the way we want it to look. So that, um, you know, we're not putting in a big fancy thing, we're just trying to update it. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to the women's bathroom. I know that that needs to be updated. You didn't. I've been going there. I didn't think just the way things place where they are, the clothes, are they high? Or they're not down low. I laugh at the point. Yeah. Some are in so, Columbia Elementary. I, I mean, we need to, we, we're going to use that building. I mean, it's being used now, and we should use it more. So will this be coming to us as this entire 650 grand or? Yeah, so, well, I mean, so, so yes, I mean, it's, it's a request. And, and again, from when I propose my budget, I haven't determined what items are going to fit within the budget or not. So see. it's definitely a request and whether I, I recommend it or not, the board certainly can change whatever my recommendations I are. Gotcha. And, and then again, too, the board can either say that maybe there's some things that need to be done now or or it just waits for fiscal year 24. But we wanted to at least bring forward kind of what, you know, some of the things and some of the items that need to be addressed. In the Thank building. you. Um, can you look in the board package at the capital reserve um, for the county, please? It's, I, I want to... I'm gonna say it's five six hundred thousand something. Yeah. Six sixty eight. So you got about one hundred and ten thousand or so patching the the windows, doors, some carpet, grades too. Those things right there that you got pretty quickly and free up this space. So, 
That's now it's it's not being developed in the first five. Right. Um, and like what the years five is coming up to seven years. Yeah, I mean, if, if 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 we were to have some of our meetings there, there may be a few other things we need to do. Uh, well, the, the, yeah, the, the, there needs to be some looking at the HVAC. Maybe not. There, there definitely needs to be some some attention to the the return. Or I'm sorry, the the vents or or the ductwork in that in that space. Um, but I think there's some other things between carpeting. Um, you know, potentially some, some, I mean, like these, like the, the curtains over the windows and stuff like that can help deaden sound a little bit better. And, and so there's, there are some things that could. Sound system, so obviously. There is no sound system. That's why it's installed sound system. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that in itself would let itself. It's kind of, it's always kind of speaking of some air yeah the one the one thing i would the one thing I, I would recommend if the board said we want to move our meetings to that space is we would i think we would want to get it where however we get these tables in this configuration would not work on that stage the stage is much narrower so it, it would almost have to be a a closer U and maybe it goes, instead of being a long sweeping U, maybe it's a longer U that goes back a little deeper or something like that, but maybe something that can close up potentially that everything can stay set there all the time. So it's a dedicated space, but the whole auditorium space could still be utilized for other type of functions. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's kind of go back to the picture. If we don't use this space uh, and it only is used for plays that that doesn't happen all year long what's that if we don't use this space who would other than the acting at uh certain types of times of year for for right in this space yes. oh well i think that'll kind of that that'll tee up to the next to the next pre uh, presentation yeah yeah there's, there's a lot of rentals. there's a lot of food rooms in there and stuff like that we have a lot of rooms in there yeah, but, but but for here, yeah, but for here, I mean, yes, there would be other things that would happen if we weren't here. But again, looking at this, I mean, I would try and find a way if we could somehow have maybe where the curtains are, somehow have it like, I don't know if some type of accordion doors came over. And so the board setup was there permanently and, and situated there. And then then the auditorium <clears throat> space could always be utilized still. But that's that's just my, my thoughts on it. Any other discussion on this before we move on? Um, I, I've got one more comment. Yeah. Uh, we eventually plan to put a building at um, Pleasant Grove. Correct. So have we thought about what the uses of that would be? I don't want us to duplicate space when we don't need to. Yeah. So at Pleasant Grove, it was never it was never part of the plan for cooperative extension and the functions that are currently in that building necessarily to move there now parks and rec may because the, the thought was so, the, again this building would stay there's gonna be a new admin building a new social services building so this building would would then kind of transfer over as part of parks and rec and part as you know because we got the facilities here behind facilities building potentially part of um facilities and maintenance and stuff like that um so no, I mean from that building, it's never it was never really anticipated for cooperative extension or some of the functions to move out of that to the admin building. But we intended to put our meetings at that building. Yes, the meetings the the meetings definitely would, and and whatever we're talking about from a from setting up a board space, it wouldn't necessarily be screwed in the stage permanent type of thing, but but it would be a, a permanent setup. It would be more of a always set up uh space it's 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 not a it's not a constant breakdown with the electronic equipment and everything and so that, that got into a question i had so i'll, I'll say I, I think about this in the way of what needs to be done whether the board is there or not because we sure don't know if we're going to do that yep and um there's so much more to think about if we do 
start having board meetings there that it's it's just almost a whole different conversation because like I think about seating you know what's what kind of seating we're going to do and what's the cost related to that for people to sit out so, and, so the seating would be it would be the, the parks and rec has chairs just they're actually out. comfortable chairs you yeah. know they're they're not hard metal fold out chairs they're comfortable kind of ergonomic yeah. plastic chairs that they would have to pull out and but I'm sure after sitting in them for many many hours they may not that, be yeah it does roughly around there. And it might be includes us is our standard meetings. Maybe we have 40 people at most. Um, but if we know that we're out big enough, it's still yeah. we've done that before. Yeah. Like you've done every went to central years ago. Yeah, so maybe so maybe the norm would be if we are there setting up, you know, we could set up chairs, set up a certain amount of chairs. And if it's you know, if if it's something that's a little bit yeah. more, we could put some more out. But I mean you know, and here we've got seating for, I don't know how many is in here. Yeah, a couple hundred. I mean, yeah. I would think we would probably need no more than probably 40 chairs set up at, a, at any meeting if we were, we were in that space. Yeah. Okay, so we're right at this. Um, so, so just, just, yeah, just one question. I mean, so, so I, I know Mr. O'Brien said something. Is, is the board wanting staff to, because again, there's no formal motion here, but if the board wants something to come forward, we could bring something formal forward for, for specific items. Or, or it just waits for fiscal year 24. Who that idea? Staff wants to think about it. Yeah. And say, yeah, yeah we thought about it. And these things that would cost this much money and then kind of went down the list. Okay. Yeah. So so why don't why don't we go back? Oh yeah. Yeah, we're we'll go back and, and we'll take a look to see what what are some things that would would be needed sooner than later if we were to have more functionality or meetings happening there and then we can wow. we can go from there because i'm just thinking with the, with the kitchen and everything else you could have wedding or something about rehearsal dinners and things of that yeah. nature. Yeah. we yes. could offer that out as a place to go yes all right thank you all now we will go to the proposed memorandum of agreement oops this is the same three players one here all right. So here I come to throw a monkey wrench in that whole conversation. Kelly, is there is, is the presentation in there? It is. So, uh, so it's me, a very, very me, brief presentation. Let me go in the um, so in our discussion about space utilization as, as staff, um, we have none. We are, we are so out of space for nearly anything that we think about doing. So this is just, um, th this is prequel to the discussion in a moment, but we're out of space. We just don't have it. So when we're talking about having a meeting here or a meeting there, um, we we are really struggling to find that space um, for county attorneys, for um, you know EMS folks, we're out of it. So as we've talked about, um, I have this deeply held belief that the governing body of the locality should have a really nice place to meet and they shouldn't have to be the traveling roadshow. That's just a little bias that I have about not um, feeling like it should look like the governing body of the locality is doing its business in not a ramshackle type of thing. This is beautiful and it's been great, but we break this down after every meeting and we put it back up. So there is discussion about where we go and what we do and, and how we have this, you know, long-term temporary meeting space that we don't have to do all that. So enter in the next wrinkle in the discussion. Um, the persimmon tree players has um, approached the, the uh, county and asked if they can have rehearsal space um, in the community center, on the stage, in the auditorium. Um, in discussion with them, although I am hoping to get the, uh, a proposed or a draft memorandum of agreement to the board at the next meeting. It's a little bit tight, but we're really hoping because they are hoping to begin rehearsals the last week of January with a performance the first week of April at the school board office, actually. They won't be having the performance there, but they wanna do their rehearsals. We also, um, in looking at different MOAs and MOUs that we have with groups in the county, 
realized we need to have a comprehensive review of all of our MOUs and MOAs. And there is a storage shed at the community center that Persimmon Tree Players owns. And the county attorneys have told us we can't give away space that the county has for free. We don't currently have an agreement with them. Um, they are a nonprofit, though they have not yet received their 501c3 status. They're working on it. They've, they've checked their boxes. They've done their work. So that we've taken care of. But in this process of realizing that we didn't have any um, signed agreement with them, it seemed like the right time to sort of bring up all of this at one time. So I've um, I've spoken with a couple of the folks who are, are the leaders in the Persimmon Tree Players. They're, they're, they're desperate for place to rehearse. Um, also, as the county attorneys have told me, we're not obligated to give anybody anything, uh, but we're trying hard. So as part of this discussion about space utilization, before we went really any further with this, I, I need guidance. Um, if it looks like the space at the community center is a likely space for the board to move into and you know not have to set up and take down at every meeting. Well, that kind of stops this discussion about rehearsal space. If that's something that's gonna happen later, then we can move forward with that. So that's kind of where I am. This is really a, a, an up here overview of, of what's been um, requested, what might be available and how we move forward with that. Um, so there's the monkey wrench I just threw into the past discussion. Um, this would be an agreement uh, very similar to the agreement we have with the Arts Council here. And, and backing up just a little bit, if we're not in here, the Arts Council will fill this with programming probably any day of the week that they can get in here. Right now they're limited because of our involvement here, um, but they would fill this. I don't think this would be a standing empty except on weekends sort of space. They, they would manage to find some programming. And and again, if we we if we didn't have our meetings in here, would the could the persimmon tree players do what they need to do in in this space? Uh, and and that's Haven't they come before us before the two, um, two theatrical? And they will, would they work together? I thought that they weren't willing to compromise with one another. Is that not true? My understanding is that the arts council is very support of arts. Some of the players would fall in with arts, and this would be the most likely thing that they want to be able It would make sense. But our only, I think, all of four or five years would be in a rather than just personal space, but that's important. I think most of that activity falls on what they call tech week, which is the weekend of each year. Yeah. To, to be clear, are you talking as if we've moved from here and then the arts and they would make use? Yeah, prior to us being here, yeah. uh, both the Arts Council and Symmetry players use this space on a regular basis. Yeah. Once we moved in here, and because of COVID, prior to once we actually full time basis, then you know the scheduling of that. Yeah. Plays and production and so on became much more complicated for the arts council. But but understanding that they're now looking for a resolution today, I guess, right? Well, soonish. Soonish. Yeah. Soonish. Yeah. 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 So um why don't we I mean, since we don't know what we're gonna do with 
space. The, the the community center and and what this board does and everything. I feel like maybe there's something I'm missing. Looks like they're just looking to be able to use it now. We can talk about what happens in the future. In the future. It doesn't push them out because they should be able to come here and. Yeah, yeah. That's not. I would think if we weren't in here, I think it would provide more flexibility for more arts, more, more arts programming to occur in here. You know, I think, I think probably the biggest, the biggest things previously was some of the big stage setups, you know, and, and I, and from what I understand, the persimmetry players has really kind of pivoted on what they do they don't have such big <coughs> yeah well yeah well i mean currently right now they, they definitely pivoted yeah they don't have a yeah so they've been yeah. operating yeah. 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 yeah well it just it just seems to me that there are so many um different if if what is meant that if you, if you need a people to sit down everybody who was a player can sit down and talk um i don't know how many Plays, seven plays, do how much rehearsal. All of that needs to be part of this discussion with the art parents. I don't think we can come up with a, oh, we can say they should be able to use the stage of the art. Well, that's the point of yeah. the rent is what I find right. the schedule here. Sure. And if they should be able to work on that, we're going to be having to spend time milling yeah. around with them. These are grown people. They should be able to sit down and get this done and get the whatever we need to approve. And, and again, the MOA, I mean, and going back to the MOA, we kind of got two folds here. Let's just say anyone wanted to rent the stage at at the community, the community center. center. Anyone can rent the stage. That, that's a rental. But but if someone wants something for no charge you get into a memorandum of, of of agreement that you have to get into with the county. And because with that, there's, there's some guidelines for, you know, who has keys, who does what in the space, if, if it's more of a, a, a long-term thing. Uh, again, the storage shed on the county's property, there was probably some agreement, you know, years yeah. and years ago, sure, go ahead and put the shed here. There's no problem with doing that. But Again, it's not our shed. It's not our stuff in there. So, so if that's at minimum going to be there, we need to have some. If the board wants to allow that, we need to have some type of formal agreement to say you have this here. These are the rights and responsibilities on both sides. Um, but in addition to the to the to the stage space, again, if if it's not at the community center and they're here, I would think that there would be there shouldn't be a reason that they couldn't be in this space to do what they need um but again that's that just, that's a discussion with the arts council but in a bit because we are going to yep. say team that seven o'clock people coming in and we want to be able to be here um we need to and this and this agreement you're charging them to use the space we are not we are so not if if charge. they um Okay. So this particular request is for three days of rehearsal space, either during the week or on a weekend day. Um, and that's all that this agreement is at the next meeting. So there's no action I'm, I'm requesting today. Um, really was um, to give you the background and the summation of it and then ask for direction. Do I move forward or not? We I've been very clear with them that um, okay. the board could decide that that is the meeting space and that will in it and they do understand that. So I, I, I think for now, the question to me is, what do we want to do with that space right now? And meaning within immediate future. Yeah. And how does this fit into it? Yeah. all of the board stuff and all that's for another conversation? Only thing I would add to that is so I think of it fairly simple because Fluviana is already in the uh, business of in part 
having spaces that are county owned that organizations use. So um, I would wonder why we don't charge for that when we charge for use of ball fields. So boys baseball, girls softball, there's a fee per participant. So I don't know how we say we do that on, on one county property and not the other. But we, they can't come in now until we have a place to go. So if they want to use it for a, what did you say, end of March? Yeah, it production? would be rehearsal space, uh -huh. just rehearsal space two to three times per week. Um, the, the actual performance is going to take place someplace else, but it would be a rehearsal oh, space okay. two to three times a week through the end of March. Um, the, the community center. At the yes. community center, not here. Oh, okay. yeah. The, the uh, performance will be at the, at the Fork Union. No, the performance would actually be at, at, school, board. at school board office. But, oh. the, but, the, but the rehearsals, yep. the request is for like three days a week to do the rehearsals at the community center. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought it was here. The next board, day. board meetings, plan and planning meetings. meetings. It's being used for performances on there are weekend performances scheduled and there are daytime afternoon after school um, programming here. Um, I, I I don't have With it in my head what the hours the, are. The, the, the Tuesdays yeah, Tuesday Thursday to Thursday. Right. We have them. I'm not sure about the hours. Yeah, I, I, I can look that up and let you know, but I, I don't know off the top of my head. It's Empowered Players. Which is fine. But if they're here from 3 to 6, is there a reason why you can't have extra stuff like that? Because it's are you asking Kelly? Or are you asking? I, yeah, I, I think we have room to, um, I want to be very diplomatic and mindful of the bombshells that I, you know, walked through last time we, we did this. Uh, yes, I think we do have room to expand what's offered in this space, but um, to Mrs. Booker's much better spoken um, point, I, I think the grown-ups in the room need to sit down and figure out how to, not these grown-ups. Not these grown-ups. Not these grown-ups. The, grown the <laughs> <ones. laughs> I, I would have to look back, and I think it doesn't. I think as it is currently written, it is specifically for the Arts Council to determine who they bring in as a performance. And I think we remove the rental aspect of that. Um, I don't think there was ever, there was never no, a rent. prior. I, I think I so too. too. And this really highlights that whole space issue thing. So we'll go back. But I, so I want to be very clear. So I am going to bring something back to you in two weeks, um, requesting rehearsal space and the um, keeping that storage shed on the property. That's yeah. what I'll be coming back with. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you. All right, now we have the consent agenda. Anyone with minutes of December 21st, 2022, account payable report on November 2022, assistant equipment and fleet maintenance technician completion description. Um, that was Jay. Anyone want to pull anything? If not, may I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? I move that we can accept the consent agenda. Second, please. Second. All right, it's been moved by Mrs. Eager and second by Mrs. Fairchild that we accept the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? If not, um, I said I have chair, say guys, so it's passed. Unfinished business, anything? New resolution, new business is the resolution that we want to send forward to try to get some funding for the yeah, so that's uh, so. So Mr. Sheridan reached out to me because he spoke to Miss uh, Kathleen Kilpatrick about that. That there is potentially an opportunity. And Mr. Mr. Sheridan, you want to talk about it since you, um, you had the conversation? Well, I, I spoke with her, and I also reached out to uh, Delegate Lee Wicks, and the suggestion was made that we come up with a resolution 
asking for it to go forward in the uh, next session. And Delegate Ware informed me that if we do something of this nature, he needs it, I believe, by next Friday. So if we are able to come up with something in writing, then we might have to have a special meeting to just can okay. yeah, that work. And Mr. Payne, how do I? I didn't hear your exact question. We got we approved We have a resolution. We don't have a resolution. I mean, so is is I mean, you you could do a sort of skeleton, but I'm not sure that's appropriate because okay. the, the problem is the the resolution is going to have to be what you want and what you what you don't want, and and you know specific reference to the to the project. So I think it'd be a little difficult to do that. Could could we could we have a resolution that goes forward that that maybe we get um, some concurrence from the board, but it's ratified at the next meeting? We can certainly do that. Yeah. Uh, because we need to get it into their hands. No, I understand that. Yeah. The question, you, yes, I think you could do that as long as you as long as everybody understands what your position is. Okay. So to make sure that everyone can. See that resolution. See that from there. Yeah, because because what what I was going to do is Miss Kilp literally Miss Kilpatrick called me at it was like four twenty as I was leave leaving the office to come here today uh, to get set up. So I've got a meeting scheduled with her at nine a.m. tomorrow to talk through, and I'm assuming this is what she wanted to talk to because I was out the door. So okay. she locked okay. it. Yeah, yeah. So well, and, and 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 just so the board is aware, what 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 would be what would be requested is is a resolution going before the general assembly requesting funding for the historic courthouse. Yeah, good. All right. And 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 why would they? Why would they do that as compared to all the other projects that are out there? They do it. I'm not, I'm not saying they shouldn't. Yeah, I'm, that's a that's pretty much a regular thing with the general assembly. They, they don't do it all the time, but they, but it's. One of the things that comes up frequently, and and why would they do it? Maybe because of the courthouse and and looking at the historic structures report, the historical significance of it, and it's, 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 I, I think it's easily defensible because it, it's a, the building is clearly a a a very important historical building of common. And the one thing I think really makes it stick out is that it's the first one, and Mr. Moss caught me one day at EW's and he explained it to me. I have no idea how he figured all this out, but it's the first one Greece had just opened up and it's the first one built in Greek architecture. And he said, that's what makes it mm -hmm. special. That's why everybody around the country talks about it. It was the first one built in a Greek style. Everything else has been run. And I support it. I just, I guess, I was coming from a perspective of what's our sales pitch. You know, that's, I think that's one of our yeah. sales pitches, and I think that's why Mr. Dahl is going to sit down and meet with Miss Kilpatrick. This gotcha. One of those things where, in her past, she's been in charge of things down there. She sees the historic value. Yeah, Miss Kilpatrick. If, if you're not aware, she was the former director of the of the Department of uh, um, Historic Resources for the state previously. Yep. So she, she's she certainly has an inside track from a historical standpoint. Oh, she's a real find. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for your question. The input was really clarifies. And, and we're okay with doing it, calling around, saying, "Hey," or sending it out. Yeah, and what I'll probably do. Yep. And we'll we can. Yeah. Okay, thank you all for that discussion. Now we will have our second public comment time. Anyone would like to speak to the board, please not call to the podium, give your name and address, and speak directly to the board. Anyone? Okay, if not, I will close the second public comment. And now we have um, a closed meeting and then a recess. She made it clear at the beginning, there's a woman in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I move that kind of voice provide to enter into a closed meeting section 2.2-3711. 
2007, the Code of Virginia now can take matters of purchase of discovery with respect to industry. Prospective business update, litigation, Flint conservation, public safety, structure, and services. All right, do I have a question? Second. All right, we have a motion to close session for Mr. Bryant, second by Mr. Sir. All in favor?
unmute this. Yeah. Yep. Madam Chair, I move to close the meeting to adjourn and come back any portion of the item and end my session. Here is all the voice from the right of the cards here by certified request of each member of the town. One only public business matter, Bob, who had to come over to the requirements of section 2.2 that should be set allowed us all to put it in the amendment. And two, only public only such public business matters as well as the final motion for those photos and the end of the first semester considered. Second. Missing you guys. Okay. Uh, Jack Wilson, I'm Mr. Bryant, second. Thank you for all the favor. Aye. Oh, individual. Individual. Aye. 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 Well, I mean, I mean, they've got their their budget requests in there, and, and I don't recall there was there was one of them just said I think Region Ten just said I cannot could not attend, and some others had some reasoning with the holidays that they that they couldn't uh, but um i've got a quick question for those three sure are they asking for continuous lending or is it going up um i i so wonder what you're saying i don't recall so right especially the small yeah. ones region 10 is one of those things it may vary by how many people they work with yeah it, well yeah I'll, I'll, just real quick so look at region 10 so they requested one hundred thirty-one thousand. Um, I don't see what last year is that because the, yeah. yeah, but that's one that adjusts with chases and stuff of that nature. Right, right. and Service. conservation again, who is not going to be present is five thousand, and then Sarah Sexual Assault Resource Agency is two thousand, and if we go back, is is the actual document you know like the, the whole budget sheet is it linked up anywhere? You know, that's what I was thinking, Eric, when I was looking at these, and maybe if you knew what they, somebody said in there before you funded us this amount and we went up 3%. Um, it, well, when you, when you get, when you get your, when you get your budget document, you're going to see the history of what they've been funded over the years. That, that, we're just looking. Yeah, but, correct. but I would say though, it would, it would help if, if, if we're going through this tonight, for us to start developing an opinion. If I'm gonna start developing an opinion, knowing where they were last year, certainly affects yeah, the opinion um, I started on. Region Region 10 is flat. Um, do you see, how about Ravana Conservation? Um, so FY22, and so they're asking for the same flat and then how about uh, sexual assault, assault resource agency i'm going to that level yep and then what's and then what they're asking 2000 i think is what it is 500 yep so those are the three that are are, are not going to that could not be here to attend for the presentations okay. and then actually Kelly, if you can do you see what the next one is for the chamber because chamber's up next i well i don't know they, they, they may be online johnny or daryl yes yeah, so i'm here yeah daryl's here yeah. all right daryl welcome um you have Five minutes, five minutes, right? For you to um, tell us about your budget request. Okay. All right. I appreciate you guys, uh, everyone being there tonight and uh, listening to the request put before you. And um, I had written in, in our request before the benefit of uh, what you guys have done for us previously. Um, we are asking for 5000 And the way I explained it, Written, and I'm not going to read everything that was in there. I want to kind of look at what we're planning on doing this year, which may be a little bit different uh, than what we've done in previous years. I'll explain why. Uh, the Flumana Guide is the main thing that we produce a year, uh, each year, just to help inform the community about uh, both residents and businesses. 
um, it, kind of a nice introduction to the county. It, it allows them to, to look up public and private schools, history, uh, events, history organizations, government services, utilities, churches, healthcare, um, community organizations, and so on. And we kind of look at it as a nice way uh, for those, especially moving into the community or businesses just starting to see the benefit of being uh, part of the Fluvanna County and also what the chamber can do for them. Um, so in the chamber office, what we're looking at kind of in the future is we would like that to be kind of a, as I put, a gateway to the county, to the community. And um, hopefully people could drop by there to, you know, uh, pick up a guide and uh, find out what we have to offer. The issue we're having, and what I've seen with previous years, is, well, for one last year, the cost of paper doubled. So we ended up getting only 4,500, and we did add some pages to the, to the guide. So I understand some costs gonna come with that. But um, with, with prices doubling, and us spending 13,000 a year on the guide, it was time for us to really reevaluate the importance of the, the hard copy guide versus an, uh, more of an online presence. Now, we'd still have copies of the online guide, but we wouldn't print up 5,000 of them or 7,000 we've done some in the, in the previous years. And probably looking at more using funds to go more toward online access. Uh, we're looking to rebuild our website. Uh, for those of you that have noticed or seen the guide recently or we're at the annual meeting, we did change our logo to make it very uh, county centric and include a lot of um, symbolism in it for our businesses and our community. And we're trying to get everyone to see that as, as a formulation of the county, Louvana and the chamber all working together uh, to build business in the community. So I think to do that and to touch more people and have more um, you know, uh, um, accessibility to the guide and allowing us to make changes to it and so on throughout the years to put it online. We're looking to have our um, our website actually be a go-to for anyone looking for services within the county. Uh, any member of the chamber they could go to and find out, you know, looking for a carpenter, looking for a masseuse, looking for physical therapy, um, you know, anything, a retail, anything that that's the place they can go and find trusted businesses in the community with, you know, eventually get to the point we have reviews, we have, you know, uh, testimonials from people, take you directly to the company's website. And we look at that as a benefit for new companies coming in that are gonna be more digitized as they come in. You know, they're, they're new to the area and that's how they've done business before. And it's be, it'd be a great asset, I think, for everyone. And the key is to um, not take the money and put into 7,000 um, you know, guides that we unfortunately have ended up with a few extra on hand. And, um, and that's you know, being generous with saying a few. A uh, decent amount last year. And we're, kinda, we're really keeping an eye on how that's going this year, really counting and keeping a good inventory of what guides are, happening, or, are there. But um, so what we're looking to do is, is possibly expand that to that, that digital side and to um, just make the resources that we, we have for the community a little more accessible, more beneficial, and more forward thinking. So um, we would mainly use the funds for the, the small amount of printed guides, 1,000 to 1,500, to have some on hand, and the rest would go into technology and looking to digitize everything and make our website where it needs to be uh getting the logo changed you know correctly to it right now we're in that weird transition of the new logo on the guide old logo um which we'd had for a decade and treated us very well but it's still on the website and we'd like to transition all that and um so that's that's what we're looking for with the uh the county funding and we just appreciate everything the county's there for us in the past and have been in the present also, and I'm sure in the future. So we appreciate all you all you do. But that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you all have any questions? Just a very quick. What did we fund them last year? How did you show? Can we know that on each of the ones coming up? Um, while she's looking, I would just have them if you can have them all. Um, 
in the past, I know I've suggested that you do the list of all the churches, which is very helpful, but they're all telephone numbers. Do you think you could include email? Most churches have email now, but a lot of churches don't. You can't get a person on the phone because they're not in the church during the week. Do um, you think That's you could find right. emails for the churches? And will you have the resource guide, the health resource guide that we that we have put in for um, the uh, elderly people? A way you can get service. I'm sorry, I was having a hard time hearing. Um, yeah, so are you discussing like access to the paper guide for those that need? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to make sure to have at least 1,500. We're not going to really come down to isolate it to a number. We're going to kind of um, assess how things go this year to find out how many we give away. Uh, of the physical guide, and then we're going to base the number on that, but probably no no less than 1,500 and possibly up to 2,500 Yeah. that we will have available and we can take to, and we'll actually hand deliver them if need be, and we're going to do some of that this year also. But you could include email for your church list, email addresses for your church, if a lot of people communicate with the churches. And they have telephone numbers, but not emails. If not, boys, am I coming through? Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm having a really hard time. Can, um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. That's so she I'm was asking about. about email addresses being included uh, per church um, because oh. some some churches don't have staff that's there to take a call. Oh, sure. But an email ad address would give them another form of communication, and of course, most churches today have them. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, yeah, we we put in whatever they they submit to us for the guide. Uh, we will put in there, uh, at least for members. So we will make sure to make a note to have uh, emails included in the future on all um, references we have to you know um, organizations in the community. Yeah, that that's a good idea. Thank you. My mic wasn't working very well. Oh. <laughs> oh, that sounds that sounds wonderful. Okay, thank you. And the other thing I was saying, there is a res you have a health resource guide in there as well. Yes. Telling people where to go for different services here in the county, which has been very valuable. Excellent. And um, so thank you for that. I I enjoy that resource. I mean, I have to. I like to them in my hand. I'm okay. And, 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 yeah, and some <laughs> people do. That's for sure. Yes. Well, that's why we want to offer both. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Next, we have um, uh, Fluvanna County Arts Council, Ms. Sharon ha Harris, and she's on Zoom. Hi, everybody, and, and thank you so much. I want to, um, on behalf of Fluvanna Arts Council, first off, I want to just thank everybody for your support in bringing the arts back to Carysbrook. I don't know uh, if any of you have been able to see our programs, but we're just so excited <clears throat> to be back in the space, and we want to thank Ms. Harris and Mr. Dahl for the work that they do so that we can share the space. Um, you'll see our next slide. There's uh, some pictures of we've, we've over the past year, we, some of the things we've done as our season has begun. Um, and to your point, Mr. Fairchild, we're asking for the same amount this year as we have, I think it's been for the past several years. Yeah, just, um, just, for, your, for, just for your reference, Mr. Fairchild, for this. So, so the funding's $10,000. Um, the county matches 55, um, the arts council, and we get a grant for 45. Way back in the day, it was a 5,000, 5,000 match. We got a grant from the um, from the state um, for, for the arts council. So we would give them 10, five of it would come from the state, then five of it comes from the county. Um, the, the state foundation changed their funding formula a little bit. So they reduced theirs by 500. And, and some years ago, the county kept it level. So the county picked up the 500 that the state cut. So, so the 10,000 is flat. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Dahl. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But as you all know, for the past 30 years, the Havana Arts Council has served the community first by establishing the Performing Arts Center and then by raising funds through grants and donations to provide arts and cultural programs. Um, we also maintain the tech and the stage. Um, we were formed with a vision to establish a venue to bring regional performers to the, to the community to provide a wide array of arts uh, and cultural activities and to facilitate arts education. You'll see our mission on the next slide. Uh, and we, uh, and then the slide after that talks about that grant that you spoke of, Mr. Dahl, the Virginia Commission for the Arts matching grant has really been a natural fit for us. And I think our original folks founded and established that because that grant is designed to support arts in Richmond and rural communities like ours. Um, the next slide, I think will tell you a little bit about that. Um, so that we can enable our residents to experience a variety of arts programs without having to travel outside of the county. And so uh, we're really happy that you all partner, thanks to Ms. Melton who, work, who does the work to secure that grant for us. And uh, the guidelines in that grant are very closely aligned to our mission, but they also guide how we're to use those funds. Um, because our, our mission from that grant is to bring performers to the community and to have a, a variety of different kinds of performances and to bring regional performers and groups that have never been here before. So um, and in addition to this matching grant, we also raise funds through donations, through ticket sales, which is minimal because we've tried really hard to make our programs accessible this year. As we return to the Performing Arts Center, we've, we've set a $5 ticket price because we really want to get people back engaging in the arts again and, and getting life back to some sense of normalcy and, and, and celebrating together. Um, as soon as the recent MOA was signed, we set to work investing over $20,000 to upgrade the technical capacity for the Performing Arts Center. We purchased and installed the projection system. We digitized the sound system, <laughs> and cleaned up the space. So you'll see in the back, the walls are kind of nice and fresh and white. We tried to, I think the Performing Arts Center was sort of not used for a while and, and we just sort of tried to freshen it up a bit. We also have raised funds to uh, work with local work with local filmmakers to do a cultural and, and uh, storytelling through film about our local history. As we provide our community programs, we're guided by our mission, like I said, and the grant guidelines. And we look to partner with organizations who are aligned with our mission and who also seek to serve the community through education and cultural enrichment. Um, if you look at the next slide, it tells you a little bit about what we do to use those funds, how we spend the funds. We pl plan and provide arts and cultural events and programs. We contract with regional performers and touring artists to sponsor shows. We provide technical direction, lighting, sound for events. We maintain the technical equipment. We provide internet and phone access and manage the box office and provide customer service. Uh, we prepare the venue before and after performances and we maintain the stage, the curtain, the scrims, the seats, the dressing room, the awning and the sign. We maintain the website and social media. We publish and distribute a newsletter. We also advocate for the arts and cultural enrichment. And we try really hard to promote Flaviana as a community invested in cultural enrichment and an excellent place to live, visit, and do business. Our season is underway. You'll see in the next slide. Um, we're really excited, as I said, to be back. We brought the Virginia Folklife Program to the Performing Arts Center in September. And we brought Willow Branch, which is a group that's been a local favorite and uh, an audience favorite. We had our first ever, we co-sponsored an event with the Havana Art Association, which was our first ever art exhibit. And we had local musicians perform. So we sort of had an afternoon event where people would come together and look at art and listen to music and, and just congregate as a community. We brought the Fluvanna Community Singers back for their Christmas concert. We had a family presentation in December of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with a local youth theater group. And then we have plans to highlight local bands in January. We're doing another one of our learning and listening tours with Horace Scruggs in February. And we're really excited. I don't know if any of you know of Steve Bassett. He's a Virginia legend uh, performer who wrote the, he's a singer and songwriter who wrote our state song, Sweet Virginia Breeze. And he's agreed to come and perform for us in March. So we're so excited about that. And then we're looking to uh, highlight um, and try to shed light on mental health with an event in May. So as we've come back, the next slide, I'll tell you some data that we've seen. Um, we've, we've had some really positive experiences and positive response from the community. Our ticket pre-sales have increased by 60% and our average ticket sales have increased by 75%. We're really excited that 70% of our recent audiences have been first time attendees. 
And 30% of our patrons are coming from outside of Fluviana. So we're, we're hopeful that, that we can not only keep our entertainment dollars in Fluviana, but we'll draw some of those dollars to the community from outsiders. But we're also really heartened that 80% of our donors have also supported the Arts Council in the past. So we're, we're maintaining, maintaining a loyalty base. Um, so our next slide. Um, just has some comments we've been so we've been really as I said grateful to the community for their support folks have taken time who have donated and and sent us emails thanking us for uh, coming back for bringing the arts back for giving the opportunity for community to come together and and share the arts people have been excited that we're now including visual arts one of the things that we were really excited well I guess a, a silver lining to COVID was it gave us an opportunity as an arts organization to go back and look at our founding mission and look at some of the goals that our founders and the vision they had. And one of those was to, was to make sure that we had a wide variety of arts and visual arts and film and education were part of it. So we've really focused on bringing that mission to fruition. Um, so these are some of the comments that we've had from community members. Um, and you've probably, those of you heard me speak or have met with me, hear me say all the time that we really kind of are a cheerleader for the arts. We really believe in the power of the arts uh, to benefit individuals, students, local economies, and our community. We know that promoting uh, that, that the arts promote health and well-being. They support social connections and volunteerism. They encourage youth development and academic achievement, retain local entertainment dollars. And we love that the promoting the Carriesbrook Performing Arts Center as a cultural hub is really a great way to promote Fluvanna as a community. Uh, to our to our residents as well as to visitors because we really believe that community arts programs form the heart of healthy and happy communities and then our okay. next slide oh I'm sorry, sorry. I, ga I, I gave you a little bit more extra okay. to this they, because, because eric spoke for your time okay so she, i think time. they i think people don't know when they're on zoom yeah. you got to find a way to let them know when the buzzer goes off yeah you may not have I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. No, doubt. You no. Didn't know. and yeah. yeah. So, right. So, um, was this your last page, Sharon? This is my last page. The next one just says thank you. These are our arts partners. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Great. Okay, but I, I said, well, I'll give it a little more time. because Well, I do, Ms. Ms. Booker, I do want to say, well, the one thing I wanted to say is we wanted to kind of thank you because you've been, you've attended all of our events this season and yeah, you have been an enthusiastic yeah, audience yeah. supporter. And yeah. we're really excited that you're investing in the next generation because you brought her, your granddaughter to see a show. So Definitely. Thank you so much. <laughs> Any questions for Ms. Harris? Um. You, you showed us the programs is coming up. Do you have a brochure like you used to have, which you have it circulated in the community? So we, we took a moment to say, wait a minute, we not, we're not sure about what COVID is going to do. So we didn't want to invest in printing a brochure. And we're contracting with our, our, our performers just a little bit ahead of time, not a whole year ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So that if something comes up and things, we pray to God, it doesn't happen, but the, the things fall by the wayside and we're not able to uh, provide those shows. We are, we're just contracting a little bit in advance. So we didn't provide uh, a brochure this year. We are seeing that that folks getting our newsletter and looking at our website, okay. are, and we take ads out in the Fluvanna Review to let people know at least three All months right. in advance. Okay. All right. That that will help. Great. Any question? Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Thank you. Uh huh. Thank you. Have a good evening. Central Virginia Partnership for Economic Development, Ms. Helen Parker. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you all for your time tonight. Great, greatly appreciate it. I'm Helen Clark, I'm president of Central Virginia Partnership for Economic Development. So we are uh, eight counties, including Fluvanna and including Charlottesville. I've been around since 1995, and I think all of you, even Chris, are familiar with our organization. So I won't talk too much about that tonight. I uh, do want to thank Eric Dahl again for being our treasurer secretary. Uh, he actually noticed a couple of Errors in our financials, and we got them promptly. Of so, course. Unfortunately, the former finance director yes. can be bad for my life. <laughs> I told him to get it right the first time, right? <laughs> and also, Jennifer Schmack, she's been a wonderful PD partner, so we appreciate that. Uh, under our umbrella is also I go Virginia Region 9 and Virginia Career Works Piedmont Region, and I do also want to take, thank Supervisor Ron mm -hmm. for his service on both of those groups. 
Uh, next slide really is talking about our announcements last year. You may remember the previous year, we did help with Stuart Tool and that announcement, 22 jobs, $9.1 million. This past year, uh, we uh, don't have a advanced success to announce, but we think all of these projects do help uh, all over the region. We have three main areas of focus. You're familiar with those. Uh, the next slide, I just want to highlight again our exciting new initiative. Uh, please look at livingcentralva.org website. I did go through that with you a little bit when I was here in October. We do have a wonderful page both for Vanna as well as on our centralvirginia.org uh, website. So we've got Fluvanna in both places. Happy to make any changes to that as you all see the need for it. We have gotten started. We have four students, one from Germana, three from UVA, and we're hiring someone from PBCC to help with our TechLink initiatives, basically talk to students about career opportunities in our region so that your employers who don't have the means uh, and time and HR staff to go to UVA and the community colleges on site, that we're figuring out how to build that network so we can keep more students when they graduate in our region. Going really, really well, uh, but we also are looking for businesses departments. So as you know, of companies that have tech jobs available, we're focused on target sectors, but we'll really work with many different companies, not just those in our target sectors. Next slide. Just to remind you, our partnership investors include some Fluvanna uh, County companies, Vanderlyn Recycling, uh, the Caton companies or MSC, and uh, many banks, CVEC, by the light and uh, a number of other folks that you all will be familiar with. We greatly thank you for your support. And last but not least, we do have a formula, 50 cent per capita, that's remained the same for a number of years. And so our request this year is based on the Weldon Cooper numbers published last January, not this January, for $13,778. And I, I feel like I was just here, so I didn't want to ramble on, but I would be delighted to answer any questions if you have them. And, and Mr. Fairchild, I, I don't know exactly what the request was last year, but it's not, it was 13,000, I think, and and, and yeah. some some change or something like that below the 778 last Thank year. You. What's that? Yeah. 13601. And it's based upon um, per capita for where? It's specifically Fluvanna, it's not regional. That's okay. how the jurisdictions, that's how their that's how their their contribution I see. is, is what, what it's based on. That's 27,556 people, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so we would base it on that number and do 50 cents per capita. And we do that throughout the region so then the larger counties and cities pay more. Thank you. Okay. Now we're also just so you know, we, I showed the investors, I apologize for not making it clear that we're funded all locally or all within Central Virginia. We have about 60, 65 private sector companies, UVA, PBCC, or Germana Community College, and then all of our localities, nine total localities contribute to this. Mm -hmm. Can I also ask, so if if you were to try to think of what data you could give to, so if I had to say to the citizens, Hey, they say, well, Chris, why do you vote to give money to them? Um, what data could there be that I could share with people and say, well, here's what they've done that's helped Fluvanna specifically? Okay. So it really depends on project activity. So Stuart Tool is a good example. Um, when that company, company before them, they were completely put out. No, the one before, oh. um, the one that was in the. Oh, the Clockner building? building? The Clockner yeah. building. Okay. Yeah. So, for example, when Fogner announced they were closing, mm -hmm. what we did is we act, uh, almost immediately started contacting other companies to say, Fogner's closing, where can these folks, who needs these people? This was before the last couple of years when lots of people need people. And we identified places where those employees could potentially look that would help fill uh, gaps and also make sure those folks had jobs seamlessly. Uh, I would have to go back and look at how many employees were impacted. It's hard sometimes for us to say exactly what impact we have, but I think we are always looking for ways to be as much support as possible. The other thing we do, and I don't have the number today, but we track the number of requests that we have. So how many times has Jennifer called us or Eric contacted us and said, hey, do you have data on this? Could you pull it from your database? So we subscribe to databases that uh, all of our locality economic developers can use to help them support their project work. Uh, 
the way I think it's best to capture it is really talking to your local economic developer. Hey, is this group helping you? How are they helping? Because a lot of what we do is what I would call back office support. You've got one person and she expands her team and accesses some valuable data by, by partnering with us and also uh, getting good ideas from the other economic developers. They meet monthly. And I think that's been very helpful, especially during COVID. It was, we were meeting uh, almost weekly and that was very helpful for folks to learn what other uh, counties were doing and kind of build a collective response and learn from each other. And I, I, I certainly feel like all that's true, but, but data but is important. The jobs and new capital investment, and I could pull that data for you over a 10 year period. Sure, or five year would be great. So Thank you. We would track it based on jobs and new capital investment announced, whether they're existing business expansions or new companies coming into the region, like a Silk City mm -hmm. um, or a Stuart Tool. Um, and so we would have that data. I did not bring up. Great. It'd be good if you can just send something. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Go ahead. Uh, I he would ship me. Oh, uh, yeah, we don't know. We don't. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Next one is Sarah Morton, and she's from Virginia Career Works, Piedmont region. And Sarah, she's online. Yep, she is. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Thank you so much and Happy New Year to everybody. On behalf of Virginia Career Works, we are one of 14 workforce boards in the state. We set up underneath the Department of Labor. We provide services to career seekers and to businesses across the region. Specifically this year, um, as a result of a Go Virginia grant we received last year, we started to dispatch a person to Fluvanna County specifically to serve businesses and career seekers. And with that collaboration, we are now partnering with Jennifer Smack and having a person set in her office to serve businesses and career seekers. Uh, to date, uh, last year, we served over 180 uh, Fluvanna residents in uh, Fluvanna. And uh, to date, we are currently are at the 114 mark. So we will suppress that number for this year. Um, we Our calendar year goes from July 1 to June 30. Uh, we do ask for 50 cents per capita, I, I mean, uh, 20 cents per capita. Uh, and that's based off of the population for Fluvanna. This year, we are requesting $5,511. And this money supports, as you all know, we get funding from the federal government, which is the Workforce Innovation Opportunities Act, which has very strict eligibility requirements. It serves a very low, poverty community. However, the locality funds allows us to help bridge those gaps where we owe uh, those federal dollars will not allow us. So when people are seeking services, or whether they need assistance with books or supportive services such as transportation, we try to use the um, locality money to help support those individuals with barriers to employment. So uh, we also offer um, hiring events for our businesses. We also align businesses with our new career pathways guide, which is a guide to help and a tool for businesses to recruit and retain employees or help skill them up. So we have developed several different tools. And this year, we just received another Go Virginia grant to help high school students, specifically career and technical education students, to find internships across the region in specific areas, specifically in two uh, traded sectors with our targeted sectors, which is light manufacturing and manufacturing. And so we've started that grant. And we also have partnered with UVA to help four-year college students to help find those students internships across all sectors of their choice. We also serve on the uh, Fluvanna County Career and Technical Education Advisory Council in support with Brenda Gilliam and uh, also Christy White, which we support and come out and help them as they need to get their students placed in uh, internships, work-based learning, or high quality uh, experiential learning opportunities and job shadowing. So we just appreciate you all continuing to support Virginia Career Works. We look forward to future collaboration with Fluvanna County. And I thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Um, do you all, anyone have a question? I didn't realize, was it, was it, I didn't realize you were out here with our correct, I mean, career tech program. 
I did you, Mike? You okay, in the school? This. Is, oh, <laughs> no, not the correction. I I didn't realize that you were so hands on um, with Brenda Gillum and the high school. That's good to know. Yes, ma'am. No. Is is the amount per capita level fund? Yes, it's per capita, twenty cents per capita. So yes. we were twenty cents last year. We were fifty four forty. This year we're requesting fifty five eleven. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anything? Anything else? That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Fluvanna County Leadership Development Program. Charlie White. And I'll tell you up front, I think they're, are you flat this year? Are you $1,000? $10,000. $1,000. I mean, yeah. yeah. $10,000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good evening. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity to give you an update on the leadership development program. And let me know when you want me to go next slide. Okay. Uh, the purpose of FLDP has changed in its 20 year life. We invite those who are curious about how the county works as well as those who really want to get engaged and make a contribution. Uh, we, we cover county operation issues and challenges, like it says, our, our whole intent is to encourage citizens to get more engaged for the purpose of improving life in the county. And the community has backed us uh, as long as we've been around. We're, we, you all on the board have sponsored us financially, supported us financially. The cooperative extension service provides um, background checks for us as well as liability insurance. Uh, and we never have a problem recruiting speakers from county agencies, the schools, um, volunteer organizations, business leaders, people are willing to turn out and speak to our class members. Thank you. The program from start to finish, top to bottom, is managed and operated by a group of FLDP graduates, the FLDP steering committee. There are about 30 of us active right now, and we share the tasks. All of the planning, all of the uh, session coordination, uh, all of the technology management. We, we have people on the steering committee who do that. And we're all volunteers. Next. This year we're meeting weekly. We started in September. We'll finish with graduation in April. And as I mentioned, our speakers come from all of the key organizations, volunteer, business, uh, and government organizations in the county. We're meeting each week, usually in a different place that's relevant to whatever the topic of the evening is. Uh, students have plenty of time to ask questions during the session. And our speakers are, have always been generous with providing their contact information for follow-up if the students feel that need. Every class member is required to participate on a project team uh, to produce something of value, of significance, of relevance, and hopefully impact for the county. Now, within the, the time frame of the course, it's usually not possible to, to produce a, a deliverable. It's usually a proposal maybe that another project team can pick up, or maybe a county agency can pick up. Uh, that was the case with the Atlanta Town Crier last year. These are last year's projects. And the Transportation Service Authority. We did have one deliverable, I guess you could call it. The, uh, the, the team that was working on the art studio tour uh, created and produced that tour last October 15. The public was invited to drive to 10 artist studios in the county. And that, <clears throat> excuse me, that event is going to become annual. It's already scheduled for 2023. Next, please. We expect about 20 of our class members to graduate this year. The demographics are pretty typical of the, uh, pretty similar to every class, uh, all the other classes. We had 31 registered. Usually we have a 20% attrition. Uh, it's bigger this year. So it's more like a third. We're down to about 21. No one reason we can point to work conflicts, health problems, family conflicts. Uh, each one's been a little bit different. Um, 
And it's been a little more intense, I think, having to drive to a different location every week rather than sit at home and do it on Zoom. So maybe there's been more demand than uh, some of the students realized when they signed up. Next. Um, new success stories. We we used to do paper registration only. We introduced uh, online registration and payment. And this year, for the first time, everybody used it. We're back to face-to-face -to -face meetings rather than Zoom. That's a better experience for the students, we think. We had to abandon the bus tour during COVID, but we resumed it again last September. Since the first class, we've had over 400 graduates. And we know that more than 250 have served in uh, elected or appointed positions in government. We've also joined a lot of volunteer organizations, civic organizations, lots of uh, lots of contributions to the capital. And I won't read this to you, of course, uh, but one measure is on each of these boards or commissions listed, how many are FLDP graduates? I think that's a, a success story. Thanks, Gary. You've given us a thousand dollars pretty consistently. I can't tell you how many years that's happened. Uh, we increased the enrollment fee to seventy-five dollars this year for fifty. We had increased costs from buying streaming hardware and paying for the cloud services, or Zoom, Dropbox, other accounts that we we use now that we're migrating online. Uh, enrollment fees cover about two thirds of our costs, and the, the board's contribution covers the remaining third. Uh, next, so we're back again to request another thousand dollar grant. Um, the budget next year will be pretty much the same as it's been this year. Uh, we, I, I, I could read all this and summarize what I've gone over, but I, uh, I'll stop here and ask if you have any questions. Uh, thank you for your help in the past. And look forward to your contributions in the future. All right. Do we have some um, questions for Mr. White? Any questions? I, I have two. Yeah. But is FLDP a 501c3, do you know? No. So, you're, okay. Uh, well, uh, filing for it, but we have not at this point. And I wonder, I mean, the amount to pay in for how many weeks? Is it 20, 26 or something like it? Is it? 24, 24, 24. For that being an every week thing, um, $75 is almost non existent. Um, so, I wonder, I mean, 110. And I'm not saying we shouldn't fund the thousand, but 110 would fully fund you without having to come to the county. And yeah, I just did the quick math at 30 people. That's roughly where it's at. And I, I wonder if people would be more like in my case, I missed a lot and money wouldn't have made a, a difference. It was business. But people um, who aren't coming, if they're more vested financially into it i wonder if you'd have a, a higher rate of people showing up because pretty i mean 75 bucks it's easy to go ah you know i signed up for it seemed like a good idea I, i'm not saying it is a case i'm I'm just saying it might be something to think about it, it's worth thinking about i don't think 110 dollars would be a barrier going from 50 to 75 did not reduce the number of residents yeah uh, so that's that's a thought yeah but, thank you you know we, we do appreciate your support and we like to be able to say that the board supports us. Um, without that thousand dollars, we'd have to find another way to say that, I guess. I mean, it started off at twenty-five dollars and then it went to fifty, and now it's at right. seventy-five. And you have two students sitting right here, Mr. Fairchild and Miss Wanda behind you, Wanda Armstrong. Still students who heard the presentation. Class of two thousand twenty-two. Right. I was in the first class. And I was in the first class <laughs> 20, 20 years ago. You were in class nine? Yes. And, uh -huh. You've driven the bus. You've driven the bus. <laughs> and that's the best tool person because he knows the county. Uh -huh. I actually heard him say that 2022 is the best class ever. <laughs> So they put on there. Yeah, right. They did not subject their students anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every, every, every year. Yeah. Every year. 
your picture is uh, is on the slide for the bus tour. <laughs> Making history. <laughs> Making history. Yeah, we did a uh, bus tour. Donors of Dream of Block were there. The family. Yes. Like yeah, yeah, I was on that tour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. That was great. Thank you so much, and continue to the, the good work. Wonderful. All right. Now we have. Last but not least, number nine, Fluvanna Louisa Housing Foundation, Ms. Kim Holland. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, last time I was here. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> Yes. That's yeah. right. You still had it during the year. Yeah, so. All of the classes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, thank you all for having us. Good evening, everybody. To you. Um, go ahead and explain. Um, first of all, I want to thank you guys. Without your letter of support for um, the swap grant that we got in the as well, we probably wouldn't have received that prison without the swap grant. So we had a letter of support from Louisa and Savannah, and it's nice to just show that that gave us extra points and um, put us well over what we needed to secure those funds. So working side by side with you guys is very beneficial. And of course, working on the housing construction um, project is um, is going to be a great collaboration between us as well. So it's been, I'm not sure exactly how long, but it's been over 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have, um, uh, we have uh, six members on our board of, uh, our board of directors. So six members from the Manic County, uh, people who are highly engaged. So I just want to say thank you for the time with um, and I, I want to um, go back to that. Um, we, have, we now have to make We've always only had to be So we work, um, we've worked a lot of hours, um, very few people, but I'm very excited to introduce Wanda Armstrong. First time, I haven't known Wanda already. Class of 22. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know her, you know Bertha. <laughs> Federal position yes. of the feds in Maryland. Mm -hmm. And she's back. So now we have two full time Fluvanna residents working for the Fluvanna Louisa Housing Foundation. So it's really showing the art. We're helping our neighbors. We're really serving our community. So um, I, I have one card in here for anybody who doesn't have it. And my card again, um, I'm going to give to all of you guys so you know who to reach out to directly. She's, she's dedicated to Fluvanna County, which is making a huge difference mm -hmm. with our grade we can do in the community. Um, um, we still just to run through our programs again very quickly. We still have the affordable rental properties, the handicapped access grants. We have over 150 um, out in the community. We do about a, uh, 100 essential home repairs a year, um, home construction, and financial education uh, for home repairs. We do not run the housing choice voucher program anymore. We got rid of that this year. So if there are any questions on it, I think it's gone. Um, Ms. Booker was very familiar with it. It was a unanimous vote to get rid of that program. But if there are any questions on that, I'd be glad to answer it. We decided it was a program that was not serving the best interest of other communities who can take a lot of problems by really getting them out. Um, just to give you a, a quick overview, our broadest program um, was essential home repairs. We did 27 roads, 15 HVACs. 28 other water related um, pro uh, projects, 19 additional rehabs. We did $321,000 worth of repairs and um, obtained um, over $200,000 worth of grants. Um, go ahead and next. Just to give you guys an idea of how much we've been ramping up, um, when the year that I came on, we had done $180,000 worth of repairs. And this shows the past two years um, how much we've increased our productivity. Four hundred thousand dollars is what we project for each year. I, that's actually a little bit of a low sandbag uh, number. I'm thinking it may be up to four hundred and fifty thousand. Um, we've had a lot of repairs coming in, and we've been extremely active. So that gives you a good idea of how much more effective we've been in the community. Um, so we can go to the next one. And um, to show you how significant the grants um, are this year, you know, you throw out numbers and don't really know what it means unless you relate it to what was coming before. So um, back in fiscal year 20, we got $40,000 this past year, we did 200,000. 
Um, we, our staff walks people through every element of that application. So you hear 200,000, you don't realize those are individual applications for a roof or an HVAC system for plumbing repair. And um, it involves getting environmental review, um, a historic review from Richmond, uh, photos of the house, application of filled out signatures from the resident, proof of income, um, getting contractor quotes and working with them, coordinating with the homeowners, approval process we sent it over to Tom Jefferson. Then we get um, we pay the contractors and then we get reimbursement from Tom Jefferson and we set up a loan if they're getting a loan. So it's it's really a very cumbersome process, right? And, <laughs> and she just jumped in. Um, she just started in June and it's really mastered uh, the whole the whole process. It's quite tedious, but um, it, it takes a lot of hours. So just to give you guys an idea of what those types of grants involve. It's really significant that we're going to sell it. I'm allowed to take other people. all the briefs you can go past. Yeah. Is that okay? All right. Well, okay. what we're doing is, is pretty broad for the, for the county. So I do want you guys to understand um, where we are. So, what does that mean specifically for Fluvanna? Um, breaking out Fluvanna from Louisa County. Um, we've, got, we've got over $91,000 worth of grants and $25,000 worth of loans. The average age. For Fluvanna County residents, it's a little bit higher at 75, but the average age of people that we call for the home repairs is 72. Um, and 69% uh, of those repairs are funded grants. So that's that's very significant. It was maybe a quarter a year ago. It was like half percent. Um, go ahead to the next one. I just wanted to share with you Louise's numbers so you guys have the relations 133,000 for um, Fluvanna, 188,000 more residents. Um, so we're actually getting a little bit more in Louisiana than we use per resident. Um, and we got more grant funds per resident. If you remember, two years ago, we did 188,000 total for both accounts, or 180,000. Um, so we're going to we're gonna probably eclipse that in each county this year. So, um, <clears throat> and this is um, just to give you an idea specific to Louisiana, how much we have increased the past couple of years. Um, so going from forty-seven thousand dollars in repairs two years ago, one hundred twenty-six the first year that I came in as director, and one hundred thirty-three thousand last year. I do think that's it's very helpful to have someone who lives here who sees what's going on and serving the community. Um, it's really nice to be able to help our, our local residents and neighbors. Um, Literally got six six doors off from me. I didn't even know that I didn't know about. So. Um, one that had a little, who also had, had a similar problem. So it's nice to really see the difference that you're making in the community for people who are children. And I do think it's going to be over 200,000 just in Savannah. We're at 106,000. So we're, yeah. And, and we were waiting on grant funding to submit. We submitted seven. So we've been waiting at just yesterday for today. Yeah, she she submitted because we were waiting on some HPG funds to come through. So that number's gonna jump up again. So the, the difference it's making in three is I'm not going to do these. These are all the grants we're applying to. This is a three hundred thousand dollar grant. Um we're applying for grants there as we can to help people decrease the cost of the grant. That takes a significant amount of time too. Um, there are 20 people on our ranch waiting list. None of them are from Savannah. That's mostly thanks to Tom Payne, uh, former board supervisor, and he's been fantastic going around helping everybody. Can he's actually helping people in Louisa now? So he, uh, we really owe him a debt of gratitude. Yeah. Um, the average cost for these ramps is about $3,500 per location. Per location. Mm -hmm. um, and I did work up a quote for um, Mel Sheridan for the Kent store voting district. So that may be something that comes up in that the local impacts on our discount. To the county if we get any grants from there. Um, go ahead. Uh, we sold two houses last year to the Van County residents to be here. Um, so this is giving us funds to be able to reinvest back into the county. Um, we started a new program on capital ownership to help with our renters become homeowners. And uh, we them on budgeting classes with the mortgage broker who sought for some home buyer files. And uh, we're going to start construction on the eight units in the building. Um, I'm not going to go through this, but just so you guys know, I like transparency. 
719,000 was our expenses. Normally we have construction in there too, so it kind of skewed it a little bit. We did not have a construction project that we outlaid funds for building a house. Um, so you can see that in this year's budget. And the next one is income. So we got about $300,000, um, not surplus this year, but that's money that is all already earmarked to go back into the community and utilized for this eight unit um, that's in the right. So we actually have funding that will help bring about a million dollars total all set with uh, land and everything. Um, so that will help us get some matching funding. So I am asking for an increase. <laughs> um, as far back the data I have was when the Louisa and Savannah Housing Foundations merged um, back in 2002, and you guys used to find this nineteen thousand. I don't know why it was reasoning for it to decrease, uh, but you guys did give us 20,000 this past year. Um, we have been operating on a huge train budget. And I do think this is very significant. So 35,000, I feel like is an adjustment. Um, go ahead and next. Just to give you guys an idea of what other counties around us are doing within our planning district. Um, Louisa and Cruvanna are both much lower than the surrounding county. So Nelson County has a population of about 15,000 and they provide 69,000. Albemarle has 113,000, but they provide 428,000 to eight. In Greene County, um, even supplies more, they only have 21,000 and uh, they provide 32,000. So that would be $2.04. Um, for that particular county, we're about uh, we go to the next one. I think if we went up to thirty-five thousand, it'd be a dollar for the next one. So I I want you guys to have an idea of why we need these funds. So they're admin costs that we can't get grants for. So all these grants that you know we're we're spending time on and, and energy and using our staff time to get. We can't get coverage for the staff time. We can't get coverage for our insurance loans to make five thousand dollars a year. Um, we have office supplies, we have internet, we have a website, we have electric, uh, phones, of course. So we had a shortfall this past year of about $23,000. Um, you don't have Virginia Housing Admin coming in anymore because you don't support the housing choice voucher program. So it's still, even if both counties are able to step up and provide us with what we're requesting, we, I will still have to come up with $68,000 in additional admin fees outside of, of our other normal values. So I don't want you guys to think that we're asking for anything in excess of what we need. Um, we really don't. Um, well, I think we're really saving the county money. Right? If, if the county had to provide these same services, it would take at least two years. Um, Urbana and Louisa combined their efforts to save on administrative costs and not be duplicating the efforts. Um, so that's yeah, this doesn't 35,000 doesn't even cover one person. Um, with what we have, <clears throat> we also, um, the contribution to other counties is lower than surrounding counties. We don't have other avenues for admin costs. We're very accountable to the county. We can make it regularly work with you guys. Um, we use 100% of our grants toward you know, those are straight to. In our and that's really nice to think for people who do donate to us, they know that we're actually using all of that money to for the license. Um, like everybody else, we've experienced increased costs, staff materials, and materials. Um, we have, we, I've been a grant writer, we have volunteer grant writers, so we're spending a lot of on grant writing. Uh, we provide zero percent for loans to residents, and we can get any. Um, no banks can give them a And it really serves as an really aging population. So we're directly serving Take them off the uh, We do pay $5,500 in real estate taxes each year. We are looking for options for us to get exemptions. Um, most of the seniors who are housed by us will qualify if they own their homes, but they don't obviously keep the renting. Um, we have a new website that's up and running. Be blast, and we have to share our story. So that's another $1,200 that we've spent. Um, we're implementing new loan software because we do more than $2 million in loans. 
um, they have been put on an Excel spreadsheet for one of our years. So um, we do have things that we need to do to update um, our books. Uh, we do have a fundraiser schedule, so I want to make sure you all had uh, invitations to that and were aware of it. So that I think it's going to be coming soon. It's going to be February 10th um, from 6 to 10. So it's kind of a nice opportunity for everybody to get out and have on 250. Um, I did put Wanda's new tour here in an invitation to the fundraiser events. Uh, I think it's going to be increasing awareness to the organization as much as raising funds. So we're hoping to just have a dog with that. Increase awareness, you know, for people that everybody's invited to be interested. Um, on silent auction and um, on a community partners as well. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Ms. Allen. Oh, okay. And it's right yeah. there, Goochland, Savannah. And uh huh. Well, a little bit further east. A little bit further. Right, about a mile east of uh, west of eight. Okay, yeah. But, so she did donate her way. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's great. Very, very, very easy work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you done events there? Been there for some weddings. Okay. And it's mm -hmm. so cute. And okay. she <laughs> said, if we ever need to get off base for a work site, I've got to have that. Yeah, I think my uh, my, my hey, wife hey, my hey, wife hey. used them for for school. They so, used it for. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. That's nice. Ever do another <laughs> off base thing? Yeah. yeah, yeah, she reached out. Anybody have any questions for Miss Simon? Uh, what rent do you charge on average for your rentals? So we charge according to what the person makes, which is uh, about 30% of their income. So it is below market rate. So we do utilize the funds we get after we pay taxes and we maintain the units. People have staff, so that's a significant way to cover admin costs. Um, but it is well below market rates. What what is market rate? It's like a typical rental. If a typical rental in uh, Louisiana County, if the one hundred rental was eleven hundred dollars, we don't we don't charge the market rate of eleven hundred dollars. Typically, a person might make thousand dollars in social security and we're prepared. Uh, so we'll charge them three. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Um, the two houses you said that you all sold, where, where'd they come from? How'd you end up with those houses? So we built them. So um, all of the rental homes that we have, we have built. Uh, there are there were four that we built in um, the Howton's how how place. How to place. Mm -hmm. So we sold two of those this year, just side. Uh, those are the ones from September and October. That we sold, we sold one of them last year. We have an older lady who's in the last uh, one that we own, and she will stay there as long as she mm -hmm. likes. She, she got it up to percent so that will go to purchase for the next one. Thank you. Um, so the people who qualify, when you qualify them for the 0% loan, like how do you qualify them? It, it would... So their income is what qualifies them. Um, if they are below 50% AMI, uh, which most of our residents that come to the service generally have a 10%, you know, 19%, 24%. They're very, very low. Well so that's what I mean by qualified. If they really can't afford the repair in any other fashion, um, they can't mm -hmm. the build them. They can't they don't have the money for their house to go and the season. Um, general the road can have seven rates. And you know, it, typically people are making $300 social security. $1,200. Um, people who are higher income, yeah, those are serving, might get nice. So do you, do you all struggle to collect very often? You know, it's really amazing that we have, we have an incredible repayment rate. People understand that the money that they repay came from somebody, they that gets loaned back out and um, their repair came from somebody else repaying their loan and they know that. Um, I, I like it. I like to um, use the example of it's a wonderful life with the banker. You know, yeah. our money's tied up over here in somebody else's house. The people are very aware of that. Once in a while, we do get burned, of course. Sure. Uh, that's going to happen. But um, for that's the only income that's our life. Um, 
we did we did change a couple years ago when I came on to create a volunteer program. So they're more invested up front. They used to not do the paperwork until afterwards. So mm -hmm. we get all of that together. If it's over fifteen hundred dollars, we do get a deed to us more at least. So we do have the land secured if it's under fifteen hundred dollars. And last question. We've talked a lot about the these uh homes that you're gonna build in Fluvanna. Um did y'all ever have are you and maybe you can't discuss it publicly, are, but are you starting to come to a place to build those or we're trying, we're trying to come to the property right now? We are we are open to other suggestions that they come up finding something that will handle the the well and sell it on one piece and will be rezoned properly with the village um, which is right. Finding, yeah, finding the way. Um, we did find we have found a location for Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So if you know of anybody, they're willing to find it. Okay. Yeah, we do need to help and see if we can find that acreage. Any other questions for Miss Arnold? Or the things like Devin talked about. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I did. Um, so don't, don't want that to go away. No, that does not need to go away. Uh, Kenny, um, I'm sorry, I have to reach out to the utility. So I just will tell you, once one comes up with this fish, we'll put that down on the bridge. Okay. Like I said, the opportunity came up to be that on your own. You should see him on the so what are you talking about? Columbia is one of the potential places for that housing? Oh, uh, we want to get the remaining uh, people who are in really bad area out of Columbia. Uh, and and home. Yeah. Okay. So those, you know, it's, it's a real challenge. Um, figuring out these are these are not easy problems we're trying to solve. They're, they're, they're very well yeah and yeah and you are able to pay for that property i mean pretty reasonable do you have a set aside amount that you could pay for these five acres yes okay. yes so fortunately with you know, we we weren't in the financial position two years ago that we are now mm -hmm. um, we are able to purchase the property outright if you have to okay yeah all right if somebody was to donate the property or at least let's say they they could okay that's what i was going to ask you so if they donated half of it or whatever i understand um and i understand they could take the market rate and i'm not sure what the donation thank you that would be good okay all right thank you thank you wanda Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. I think we, yes, that's the end. So now I see this word. What is this word? Oh, is that what it is? Hey. All right. Wow. Moselle's first board meeting and look what happens. What? We're out of here before 830. Um, <laughs> we, do we have a second? We can sit here and wait for the second. <laughs> I don't hear a second. Hear second. <laughs> We have it uh, to adjourn by Mr. Short and second by Ms. Eager. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Or the chair votes? <laughs> aye. You all have a good rest of the evening. That's the first <laughs> one of those I've been a part of. Uh, you know, we knew it was, maybe. It, it was a light adult thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we should have done. We should have, we should have taken the 15 minutes from the three that didn't show. And we really did. And even and even that I. Yeah. May need a